was one of the most classy ways I have seen DC Comics honor an icon, honor a legend in the comic book industry. And I kind of want to talk about it a little bit. I may cut it short if I get too emotional. I'm going to try to get through this. But in two words, this morning when I was looking over the new Green Arrow 80th Anniversary Edition, in two words, I was in tears. This is a story about Denny O'Neill, and sometimes with people like that, you don't realize how important or special someone is until they're gone. Last year, when he passed away, I did a tribute video of sorts, kind of just a music tribute. I didn't really talk to the extent of what Denny O'Neill did for the comic book industry, and I didn't really go into detail. Most people know. But there's a lot about Denny O'Neill that really remains his legend. And one of those things is saving Batman, saving the comic book industry in a way. He saved Batman by making him less campy. It went from a time of Adam West to a time of Denny O'Neill. And you've seen that massive shift in narrative, in way of storytelling. And that is a lot in big things to his editor, Julia Schwartz, but also mainly to him. And to, he teamed up later with Neil Adams and stuff, but it was a fantastic run on Batman, a way, a new way of thinking. When he had just come from Wonder Woman, which was probably, um, it, it was fun, but it wasn't a great Wonder Woman run. Now, there's other things he's done that he's probably known more for, but I love his work on Batman, specifically Nightfall and No Man's Land. Those are two stories that I can read over and over. Nightfall was shortly thereafter the death of Superman, so it had to be changed a little bit. You had to know that Bruce Wayne was alive because a year is a long time to not have a Batman or a Bruce Wayne in a story, and we saw Batman after Batman fail after fail, and then with No Man's Land, one of sto- one of the better stories that I- I'm thankful for because that's the one story I look back and go, is Harley Quinn really, truly redeemable? She did some pretty terrible things. But we also had great characters in there like Huntress. And it wasn't just Batman, even though he was absent in the beginning. Great storytelling through Oracle and great, you know, storytelling through the different factions of you know, the Blue Boys or Joker's Gang or different stories all together. That is what Denny O'Neill gave to the comic book industry. He gave grounded characters. He helped comics grow up. And what I mean by that is he took a look at comics and wanted to make them more relative to what we're seeing nowadays. And sometimes, even though things may have been a little heavy-handed. I would say nowadays, maybe people would cringe at it because it's done so often, but then it was revolutionary. It was something that had not been done. So he took societal and political issues and brought them into the comics, and we saw amazing things like Speedy, Speedy being addicted to heroin. And even though Marvel had done something similar with a fake drug, this was different because this was real. This was a real drug out there on the street. And this was a brand new concept, not even approved by the Comics Code Authority. They went completely against that. There's also the whole, um, it was the team up with Green Arrow, right? And uh, Green Lantern, where you had... Him initially, Green Arrow, initially stand up for a slumlord, not realizing he was standing up for a slumlord, and it'll go on to one of probably the most reprinted page or reprinted comic in its era. And that is when he asked, we see uh, an older black man ask, you've done this for the orange skins, you've done this for the blue skins. What have you done for the black skins? I mean, besides... Uh, <laughs> saving the planet a few times, I, I would say it was very revel. It, it was unheard of during that time period. And Denny O'Neill brought that. He brought great characters like Ra's al Ghul. 
he brought great storytelling to comic books. And when he was lost last year, there, you know, DC put out a statement, of course, and, and that was pretty much it until today. And that's what I want to share. Well, until yesterday, they did share this on their website. And I want to talk about it a little bit because in two words, the story is called tap, tap, tap. It's the very last story within the Green Arrow 80th anniversary edition, right? So we see a young Denny O'Neill here. And he's listening to his radio about cowboys and robbers, right? It was what? I, I'm not sure exactly what year Denny O'Neill was born, but it was it was probably um my guess. I know he died at 81 and that was 2020, so 1939. All right. So he was listening. And that's when his life kind of began, right? We say a young Denny O'Neill go to Superman. And he's starting to read when comic books make that entrance into, well, the mainstream media. But that's also, again, when it was more campy. And, and just, you know, this is written by a son. I guess I should have prefaced with saying that. And I think it's really great that they included him in this. Denny O'Neill then served in the military. And he's thinking still then about, you know, comics or bad guys or, or mobsters. I'm not really sure on that one. But even so... He took a comic book writing test. He originally started at Marvel and he was kind of brought in to mimic the style of Stanley. And it didn't work out initially very well. He was put on some uh, lower grade titles. Didn't work out well. And that's when he was found at DC. And this is what we're seeing in the second panel here. A more serious take on what he's made comics to be, right? So then we see him, and he's he's talked about this plenty of times before. He went through the whole you know, sexual revolution of the 70s, and he was right there. He even called himself a hippie, right? So we see him tap, 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 tapping away, and he is writing in the 80s with his wife and is in the man that is essentially writing this, Larry, in her arms, and he is writing those Green Arrow stories I talked about in the beginning of this, even so far to get best issue in 1971 and break, you know, norms for everything. This, I'm assuming they're talking about him and when he wrote about Batman and Talia's. Those were huge stories. I love the little details they put in with the Green Arrow here. And he's, he's thinking about that. And now, one thing I do want to say is when he talked about when he did the whole speedy issues, when we saw him addicted to heroin, he does talk at later on in his career that he did have some alcohol alcoholism. And he doesn't think that it actually really related to that. And he never really, you know, thought to equate one with the other. But maybe subconsciously he did. So he got over that. Right. And he starts um, taking his son to see Kung Fu movies. That's so adorable. Him and his wife as they are older. Another one he is famous for writing is, uh, you know, Vic, me, the question. He does a great job on him. Probably the first question stories I had ever read or ever read and, and still just some of my favorites. So we see him at an older age and his wife. And kind of watching stuff together on TV. If you see back here, here's another little Easter egg. He was the one who brought Superman versus Muhammad Ali. Great job to the artist for putting that stuff in. Also, watching Batman. He did a lot with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Returns trilogy. So him being, you know, watching that with his wife is amazing. But now his wife is gone, right? And we see him watching everything explode all of the superhero genre explode all of what he touched and helped create they're all on his tv and I, I really like that so he's seeing then the joker right and we're seeing someone sing to him and i, I like like even even scarface back here i absolutely love the little details they put in there we're seeing someone sing to him as he's in the hospital. And then slowly, as he starts to fade away, we're right back to that beginning story where he is um, on <laughs> the cowboy and robbers, right? 
And that then fades to nothing. Good night, Pops. Those are the two words that made me cry earlier because that is amazing. And you see all, la, 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 la. <laughs> you see all of the different um, characters he's written over the years, just at a side. And I think, I don't know, I really like this. I thought they did a really, really good job on it. And I think this is how honoring legacy, honoring people that really shaped what this community and what this industry is should be done. I think it's amazing. So let me know what you guys think about this. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I think this is the, I'm hoping next year at something like the Eisners, this is kind of in that category for a short story or something like this because it absolutely deserves it. Larry O'Neill did a fantastic job and the artist, I will put it up on the screen. I didn't see offhand, but did a fantastic job also. So let me know. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>